Yeah, baby. We're back on the air. Nick DiPaolo podcast. Okay. Big, big day. Big day. I'm not talking about the Oscars. I'm talking about comedian Joe List made the trek up here from Queens. Astoria or Long Island City? Not that there's a difference. Astoria. Astoria. Oh, you have money. Mm-hmm. I stayed at Joe's. Uh, by the way, Joe's a very funny comedian. Uh, I met him in Boston in, what was it, 1877? Uh, <laughs> no, not 2006. It, was it eight June, years ago? June 26th. Jesus Christ, you act like we fucked. Well, Is that the date memorized? Oh well, my I have God. my book. I'm like Rain Man. You know, I remember dates. <laughs> You're like Rain Man. Oh, you should have heard him. He just came in and he's fucking, he's just like, he's... A lot like me, just a kind of a crotchety New Englander who pisses and moans about everything. He doesn't like the mic. He couldn't figure out the headset. It's like I threw him a Rubik's Cube. Well, the headset is set to fucking... It's not set for anything. It's been sitting on the table. We haven't had a guest in two months. You get it? My, like... wife, my wife picked it up when she was dusting, Joe. I feel like your previous <laughs> guest was Shaq. <laughs> no, Shrek. It fell down. To my... oh, Shaq, Shrek, same thing. It was so funny, man. He came in and uh, what else were you whining about? I was laughing. My well, there's nothing in front of me. I feel very oh, nude. I got him there's on a no... nice, nice leather couch. Look, it's as close to a talk show set as you're going to have in the basement of a house. Well, I've never done a talk show before. All I've right. never done any TV. Well, you act like you've done a hundred of them with this, the whining. This industry stinks. He, he, he doesn't. You know, we'll get you on. This is going to spring you. This, this is going to be big. This episode is going to put you over the top. <laughs> I think this is going to get me right onto Comics Unleashed. You're gonna, yeah, there you go. Oh, somebody put a bullet in his head. God <laughs> fucking damn it. Worst show in the history. You should put a camera right here and be streaming this. Uh, I mean, this is... Yeah, like, I know how to fucking do that. I, I just know. figured out the fucking VCR. Get Rob Sprantz, that queer up here. Um, yeah, no, eventually we will be doing all that. You know what I mean? I just wanted to get comfortable for like a year and a half before we brought the cameras in. And uh, whatever you do, don't fart in here. Joe's been known to drop air. He <laughs> well, killed. He killed a hundred curds. Well, you sent me that. Uh, you it's sent like me a some mustard gas. You sent me a fiber thing that I've been taking. I fasted for twenty four hours, and then I took that fiber business you gave me. Why are you coming in so hot? And then I had chocolate. I don't know. You just turned me off. What the fuck? I had a hot no, story didn't. here. I didn't. I didn't. You're all right. I can't hear anything now. What are you now talking I about? I didn't touch your headphones. Go ahead. Seriously? I think you turned my mic off. No, I didn't. Now I'm back. All right. Am I too hot now? It says you're too hot. All right, well. Here's your, here's your mic level. I've been working out a lot. Yeah, it looks it. I got, a, I got, got the shoulders of Charlie Callis. I got <laughs> it's a comedian in the 70s, folks. But I, uh, I got a me and Jim membership. I just got a voicemail on the way up that I get a free hour personal training session by, for joining the gym. What gym Some is Some guy it? named Trevor. Oh, Trevor? <laughs> it's good. You'll be, on the, you're gonna be, you'll be benching and his nuts will be an inch from your forehead. <laughs> And he'll be in, you know, tight red biker pants. Well, I'm the guy. I don't know what I'm doing in there. I just go and do uh, one of everything and then leave. I'm telling you, you were, should have been a P90X guy. We talked about that. Well, I, they have the rope business there. I've been using the rope thing where you just fucking whip the rope around. And, and then my, my hanging girlfriend. Hanging minorities at the gym? My, sure. <laughs> my girlfriend goes, it looks like someone's just going to come over and be like, that's not, you're not doing that right. But it feels good. My shoulders, I feel ripped. Yeah, you look shredded. Yeah, I'm getting ready to break up with my girlfriend. So if anyone, ladies, oh, are oh, let's get into this. Hold on. Oh, I'm just kidding. Jesus. Are you? Yeah, I'm kidding. No, you, no, yeah, you don't kid like that. That was. <laughs> I saw the look in your eye. I, I, she do? I am kidding. She fuck around with the guy at the gym on you. Yeah, she fucked a black guy twice. No, you don't. Don't bring up race. This is this kind of show we do here. <laughs> Who cares what color the guy is? I mean, if she's cheating on you, that's bad. Well, it's a penis Except size. Except for though. Armenians. She's not. She never does anything. That's wrong. where I draw the line. Armenians. Um. <laughs> Talk about, first of all, I want to talk about uh, Last Comic Standing. Give, give us that story when they cut you off. I want people to know what a shit business. You mentioned show business. A horrible business. They edited me off the show. I, I was just talking about this on Bobby Kelly's podcast, and uh, everyone everyone, oh, that everyone went against me. <laughs> and even Noam was, was shitting on me. Because I was talking about, I did Last Comic Standing in yeah. 2010. Yeah. And uh, they edit uh, the, the poor people. If they, people listen to both podcasts, now I'm just going to sound like a real bitch complaining on bullshit. Nobody's going to hear this. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> I did Last Comic Standing 2010. I do the first round in New York. They call you back for the second round. They they say come back later tonight. Yeah. And then when you get off camera, they're like, actually, it's actually tomorrow, which should have been my first clue that this thing was a whole bullshit. Well, that's how showbiz works, Shelby. Go ahead. Yeah, so I got to come back the next day. Illusion. They tell him it's the, the next night. Boo, boo, boo. Yeah. I do the set, the set of my fucking life. I murder. Geraldo's like slapping the table, laughing. Kindler, the whole business. Yeah. They they call everyone one at a time. I, the heard, next, there was these, a, I heard there was a leg loose on that table. But go ahead. <laughs> No, okay. <laughs> they call everyone up one at a time. They, it's real dramatic, you know. 
Yeah. My, my favorite line, I got to include this part of the story. My favorite line ever, Craig Robinson, before they come back, his movie's coming out, he goes, everyone remember to, you know, the, he's hosting the show. Yep. He goes, everyone remember to see my movie, Hot Tub Time Machine. And Geraldo goes, what's it about? <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite lines ever. I was dying. Yeah. So anyways, I'm like the last, they, they get down to the last person. The last person going to L.A., for the last comic standing, uh, excuse me, Joe List. They call me. It's my big triumphant moment. Yeah. I wave into the camera. I miss you, Becca. My ex-girlfriend moved to South America. I was heartbroken. Yeah, I told I miss that you. Drug dealer. I remember that. <laughs> the whole cartel she was with. Actually, so I, get, uh, I get the envelope. It's empty. It's supposed to be a plane ticket to L.A. It's empty. It's actually you go to Glendale. So it's all the whole thing. But, but you're the last guy going. I'm the last you guy going, going to, to last L.A. Guy standing. They send me to fucking Glendale. This is cruel. I shoot the thing in a theater. They do like. Probably shoot for four days. They're shooting in my hotel room, the whole thing. Then the show comes out three months later. I'm completely erased, vanished from the show. Me and three other people. What the hell's going on out here? That was your response. Huh? <laughs> all, all four guys, all edited completely out. They never told anybody. So my family watched. Oh. My ex-girlfriend streamed it in Peru. They're sitting home watching, expecting Everyone's to see Everyone's watching. You. I'm at an open mic. That's where I'm at. I'm at an open mic with all these comics. I'm like, oh, shit. It's not an open mic. It's like a regular show, but it feels like an open mic. Watching the show, yeah, completely a- gone. Empty. Zero. Zero Joe List. No trace. Excuse me. Joe's dad at home. Dad, are you going to... Is that Cape Fear? Yeah. <laughs> So I'm completely edited out. That's the whole story, But who they replace you with? Well, come on, four, give me the theory. Four people were edited out. They were all white, heterosexual men. And then there was another comedian who did not advance in the second round, uh, a, who was a, a black woman, and she did go to the second round, to the fi- next round, even though she didn't advance. So they took out four white, heterosexual men and added a black woman. Those are the facts. So you can, some people are like, eh, yeah, no, people but that's, are arguing with me, but that's that what happened. happens. Now, my point was, we were talking about, and, and Noam was like, well, if you could ma- wave a magic wand and, and make it whatever, what would be your thing? What would you do? And I'm, I'm not offering a solution or saying, I'm just saying, if a TV show, if NBC edited four black people off the show or yeah. four women off the show, yeah. it would be a CNN news story, yeah. blog post. It would be insane. What yeah. happened to Seinfeld? Because he only had his friends on the show. Yeah. So that's, that's all my point was. So you were a victim of a reverse discrimination. I don't think... Well, I, I'm not, I don't want to... I'll say it I don't for you. Get, thank that's you. It's a time of living you're in good. and you're in an ultra-liberal business. Get used to it. Yeah, I kind of want to cast dispersions. I'll, I don't even I'll know what do that, that means. I'm in my honest. basement. I'm doing a show. And I'll, <laughs> I'll do that. No, I know. I mean, it happens, but... Uh, but I think there was I just too many story. white people. There's too many white guys on the show. Yeah, you so can't have that. It. You can't have more than... Uh, you can't even have like four white guys, you know, uh, in a commercial. We know how that works. I but uh, what are you going to do? So, uh, but th- you're a victim. I also wasn't in my own fault. I did do a joke about cops getting killed by getting hit by cars, which is probably tough to put on TV. <laughs> oh bullshit! I, I then, remember that bit. And then uh, that's a real classic, available a, on my album. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I also every time they, I'm not good with the hey, what's that? They were like, hey, do you think you could be the last comic standing? And I was like, not really. I don't know. I don't know. I'm very uncomfortable on camera. I'm uncomfortable right now. <laughs> if there was a table here, I might be all right. Oh, my God. What are you? Uh, Maybe a soda? Santa's uh, helper? Oh, I brought cookies, by the way. Oh, you brought cookies. Chocolate chip. Delicious. Yeah. Just stick them right up that tight ass of yours. Um, you want a soda? I have Mexican soda in my fridge. <laughs> you know Rebecca, right? That runs the... Uh, Rebecca Trent. Yeah. Of course. Creek and Cabin. Remember we had... I had the <laughs> Creek and the Cabin. What is it called? Creek and Cabin, I just said. She has a place called but the Cabin. she books Cabin. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I had to do it one time. Big, what's the difference? Creek, Cabin, fucking... Yeah, it's I had fun. a cabin on a creek up in Maine. <laughs> Me and a... Listen. <laughs> no, she... Remember she brought this summer at a cookout? She bought 400 bottles oh, of Mexican right, right, soda. Right, right. I'm trying to quit soda. You just asked for one. You really I know, are a crazy to... motherfucker, aren't you? <laughs> I was trying to be comical. What the hell's going on out here? Uh, so, uh, yeah, I stayed at your place in Queens, a story. Remember? Was that the same place? Of course I remember. Yeah, it's the same it's place. The same... I've been there for 1,100 years. Do you years. still have 11 roommates? I got, I got it's two. It's like a sweatshop. <laughs> I went in there's 19 guys from different countries making shoes. I got Pat Dixon and Jason Canner, and then I got a 50-year-old Indian guy who works at the airport. Oh, he's still there. Oh, yeah, That's Jay. the guy. 
I slept where? <laughs> you slept in the living room. I slept in the living room, and there's a sheet. There's like a there's a there's a doorway covered by a sheet that has like shit stains on it and blood stains. And I, I kind of look before I lay my head down on that beautiful what was I sleep on an army cot? Like, I think it was, was like a, a blow up mattress. It was a blow up mattress with about a pound of air in it. <laughs> Woke up with scoliosis. I. I look, I look through the sheets because it didn't quite cover the whole door, right. and I see a guy that looked like the Indian guy from Seinfeld. I see him like, um, is, is he dead? He's exhausted from making shirts for Joe's uh, Joe List clothing. Well, what's funny How about old him? is he? He's like 50, 52 maybe. That's my but age. He, hates... he was older than that. No, I think that's how old he is, but I think oh, he's lived God. a hard life. You know, with these Indians, they come across on boats, and it's, it's, it's a whole true. thing. He came here on a piece of uh, plywood, didn't he? <laughs> He, this guy, my favorite part about him, he hates pants. He, he works. Yeah, and that, it's, that's what I hated about him, too, when I slept an inch from him. <laughs> he fucking, he comes home, he works at the airport, he's in charge of, like, the redcoats at LaGuardia, all the, like, the customer service people, and he's, like, in charge that of LaGuardia, everybody. LaGuardia, by the way. So he, he comes home. Joe Biden was right. And uh, he comes home in his suit, he walks up the stairs directly into his bedroom comes out like four <laughs> seconds later like superman in boxes and a t-shirt he takes i think they break away pants he has pants on for like three mississippis when he gets home why is that he just hates pants i don't know he's, he's a he bit hates, chubby let me get this straight an indian guy in his late 70s who hates pants and he's living in your house <laughs> so then he walks around with uh, with in his boxers and and then he, he argues with his employees. It's the funniest shit ever. And his ex-wife, who I guess is like a big cunt. I argue with his employees every time I call customer <laughs> service. He loses his mind on the phone. One time, this is my favorite. He goes, he's a big, you know, thick accent. He's like, oh, you're thinking of me now. Were you thinking of me when you were sucking his cock? <laughs> Which is He's fighting with his girlfriend? With his ex-wife, I think. I didn't know. Oh. Yeah. And then, uh, then another time. I love he's Americanized. He was arguing with his, like, one of his employees, and he goes, uh... Do yourself a big favor. Listen to me. Listen to me very carefully. Do yourself a favor. Throw yourself down a flight of stairs and smash your head off the wall. <laughs> He's fucking hilarious. He's like a hilarious guy. I just hope you're recording right now because I'm looking at, uh, we're on track one and two. Yeah. And uh, they both seem to be recording, but um, mine is in blue and yours is gray like the other six tracks that aren't active. <laughs> <laughs> but it, is it moving up and down and shit? Uh, yeah. Why yeah. are you in blue? I don't know. I gotta ask Rob that. No oh boy, oh boy, I'm coming across me? in gray. Now I'm nervous. No, you, no, it's, uh, it looks like it. Who knows? Oh boy, you're gonna sound like a psychopath just having a dialogue by yourself. Oh, that would be hilarious. <laughs> That's what you do. That's what I'm gonna do. Interview people that aren't here. <laughs> <laughs> by the like way, the when, king of comedy. When, when we're done here, you're gonna take. And I'm serious about this. I have a sled, like a, you know, like Citizen Kane, <laughs> like a snow sled. I want you to take a picture of me. On my road, you know how it's all windy. Yes. If you if you stand in front of my house and look up, it looks like a luge run. Yeah. I want I'm gonna lay on the sled <laughs> on the side of a snowbank, and I want you to take a picture from a distance, because it looks just like a fucking luge. I am. Well, first I'm, of all, I'm putting could, on a wetsuit. I could barely. <laughs> I could barely get down your driveway. My Dodge Neon. It's all it's all uneven and muddy and yeah, there's snow and a couple bodies. Yeah, maybe you want to upgrade to the <laughs> Dodge to I would the love Dodge to. feature. <laughs> I'd love to upgrade. I can't afford it. What does this pay, by the way? What, this? Yeah. <laughs> um, like I said, I have Mexican soda. <laughs> oh. I don't know. I'm not going to pay anything, but it'll pay off in the long run. Yeah. But um, I can already smell the Twitter followers coming uh, my way. Uh, sarcasm. I, I'm being serious. I need some. I'm releasing a big album this summer. I'm going to do like a, one of those. A big, who do you, Neil Diamond? <laughs> <laughs> This is this is my last <laughs> chance, my last push. I'm recording at Go Bananas. It's gonna be a hot one. Ooh, no good. I don't. I didn't. I played there once. It's the only club where I said I will not come back there. You say that every club. I do say that every club actually. <laughs> but uh, no, that one. You said that they on stage no, at every club. No, Ohio's tricky for me. Certain parts of Ohio love me. Other parts they don't. That when I did Go Bananas again, this was in the early '50s. <laughs> Jack Power, um, I was open to the. It was a college night, the first night there, right. and they were not. I mean, they were drunk and crazy, and I mean, I ate a bag of turd <laughs> um, with a side order of shit stains. Oh my god, that I, I seriously, I don't get flop sweat often. I was right. up there. It was like I had jaundice, <laughs> yellow fever, and uh, then the weekend I survived. But I was like, no, thank you. 
go bananas. I had one. I did one. I closed like the open mic. I was like in town doing a guest spot, and I had the set of my life, but I was also following 11 open mics you know, or whatever. Uh, uh, the last two weeks I've talked to you, you've said I've had the set of my life 11 times. How many I, fucking lives have you I led? speak in hyperbole. I keep getting better. <laughs> Each one is, you know... I a hot it. set. Last night I really did. I did a one nighter in Philly. It was like a sobriety show for these sober people. Murdered. I like sober crowds. We're going to talk about of, you have a problem with alcohol. In a of few minutes. course, they're the best. I uh, that's seriously. I was about five five years into my career, and I did a thing at uh, I, I want to say at Northeastern University. It was an AA thing. Sweeney yeah. hooked me up with it, and and um, it was in a big theater, seven hundred fifty people. Set of my life, do I dare say? <laughs> but you're right. They were drinking nothing but coffee, which means okay, they're listening to every word, right? And and they're catching the stuff that falls away in a comedy club when right. people have nine drinks in them, right? And uh, you're absolutely right about that. Yeah, there's, but booze there's... really. I know what you and I do. Like I say this on stage. Like I'm a conduit for bear sales. I might, I might as well be driving a fucking Miller light truck. <laughs> But but if you take the booze out of it, it's so much better. Of course. Right? Booze is bad. People are, become idiots. And, and there's always people yelling and crazy. The other night, uh, I was at a, a show, an LOL comedy club. And it was, a, it was like a horrible crowd. There's like 10 people. Mm-hmm. And there's one Maybe drunk... Maybe they ought to change the name. <laughs> this one drunk woman. She just loses her shit during this one guy's set. And she's hammered. She's like, this is just talking. He's just up there talking. Did she have an accent? No, I mean she was just shit faced. So she she didn't think she didn't even know what the stand up was. She didn't even know what the art form entailed. I th- I think that's what the problem was. She didn't understand. She, she was like, "Is this talking? That's what this is." She, and she was like a sixty year old woman. I guess she it was her first show. What did she think you were gonna you were gonna come out on a dirt bike and do donuts? <laughs> what? She's like, "He's out there. He's talking." Yeah, I hear him. He's just, he's just talking. See, and they had to like kick her out. Kick her out. Kick her in the face. <laughs> Gee, this is what I'm talking about. I was just talking to Colin Quinn about this. You know, he's out there on the road doing his his uh, one man show, right? And that's the beauty of it. You know, he gets a, a a better a quality audience, right? I mean, he said, you know, the the one thing about it, I don't have to worry. He goes right before the show. I'm not looking at going. Oh, this table's going to give me trouble. This right. table might be trouble. Which is is that's what keeps me away from driving to the city every night right. having those confrontations i can't do it anymore yeah i can't do it i'm 52 i can't be calling a table of 20 year old girls twats right it's usually girls too what what percentage of the time 99.6 <laughs> it's chicks and i'm not exaggerating i said 70 the other day 70. and a woman a, a female comedian corrected me and said it's probably more like 90 there you go so even 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 women are on board. it's it's really insane it's it, almost always women it, it, it is and uh because they you know it's the old thing you know i mean What's the the hunter gatherer? If they were in the fields when it got dark, they kept talking. Yeah, they're gathering be... up pickles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they did. They, I mean, get a few drinks in them, then they get beer balls. Then when you tell them to be quiet, they give you the finger or say "fuck you." Right, right. And uh, you can't hit them anymore. No. Um. But uh, yeah, no, no, you're right. It's and and you're right. Female c- comedians will tell you that. That's not a sexist thing to say. Yeah, short attention spans. It's almost. Uh, it's almost pro women. You guys are the problem 90% of the time. It's like a, it's a positive thing. How's that a positive thing? Like, you're losing me. Well, I was being sarcastic, but now I feel like I really laid an egg here. No. You, know, you don't have to get a laugh, Joe. It's an interview. <laughs> this is, this is going to be all about WABC. In New York. Um, <laughs> well, it's, uh, I was being sarcastic. It's not really a positive thing. Well, I thought 90%. you were being, you know, you're kind of a progressive guy. Yeah, I am progressive, you have right? You a poster of Obama. Um, I voted for him. I voted for him once, but then I voted for Jill Stein the do, second time. Do you want to That's apologize really progressive. now? No, I thought he did great in the first term. All right. I'm going to leave that there. I think he's doing fine now. I don't know. I don't follow. I voted no, for Jill apparently, Stein. Apparently you don't follow. <laughs> I voted for Jill Stein. Jill she came, Stein? She didn't even come in third. Who the she, fuck is Jill she came, Stein? She came in fourth. Who's that? She's from the Green Party. She lost to Gary Johnson, who I was <laughs> on Red Eye with. Yeah, Mr. Weed Smoker. He's a hell of a guy. Yeah, good guy. So she's what? She's a Green Party? She's from the Green Party, yeah. Yeah. Who would have fucking guessed? She didn't do well. <laughs> fucking, they came, they came up with three, uh, what are they, three, I think they came up with what, 300 solar jobs, and it cost the government like 40 million a piece? I don't know. I do. But, uh... <laughs> I don't watch TV anymore. It's bad. Well, you should because Russia is uh, about to invade the the Ukraine, and um, you know, I'm excited about it. I, I finally, I've been waiting for this Russia United States war since I was two. Well, you know, it's so funny. And again, 
uh, you know, what's his name? Mr. Romney brought it up while he was campaigning, saying that was our biggest threat. Oh, asked yeah, him yeah, that yeah. In one of the debates. And, of course, he got mocked yeah. by Joe Biden, saying this isn't the ninth, this isn't 1956 anymore. And, of course, Hillary jumped in and agreed with Biden. And uh, Obama said the same thing. Ah, I'm sorry, man. You should apologize for voting for But, uh, no. I mean, uh, what are you going to do? But I, I, no, you're right, though. I kind of, you, 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 you don't want stuff like this to happen. It's a little, but, but, but what? It makes for tremendous TV. It's very exciting. I think everyone's going to be. It's, <laughs> it's going to be. Exciting. It's going to be fine, right? I, I don't know. It always feels like there's a war building up, and then nothing ever happens. I know, but we never had a community organizer run in the country. Reverse a former uh, KGB guy. This is a. <laughs> It's t- it's 1956, it's like, like somebody said to, to Putin. It's still 1956. It's like Rocky IV. It, it is, but um, you know he, he's calling Obama. Obama said there'll be you know if you do this, there's going to be problems. What are you going to do? Right. You know what I mean? Where, uh, where are they going to go? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? But um, what the hell else did I want to talk to you about? Your uh, you, yeah, you being clean and sober, man. Yeah, clean and sober. Fourteen months. Fourteen months. Yeah. Let me tell you something, man. Uh, when I met Joe, he was, and I didn't know. I, to, after a few months, I had him opening for me. I met him in Boston, and uh, you know, he seemed fine. Maybe I wasn't paying attention the night I met him. He, he had dried <laughs> puke on his pants. But uh, I took him out with me on the road, and by the end of the night, this fucking guy. Went, I mean, you were fall down drunk. I go, holy shit. And I'm thinking, man, ah, maybe he just had a fight with his girlfriend or something. Well, I would have quit earlier, but then you kept being like, that's what I like about you. You're a drunk. And I was like, well, look Nick at, thinks at, I'm a real drunk. blaming it on me. You <laughs> see why he voted for Obama? You see what they do? They just I voted blame. for Jill Stein. Oh, Jill Stein. I'm sorry. Yeah. What are yes. you kidding? She doesn't blame anybody. <laughs> She's a sweetheart. She'd have this Russia thing snapped up in no problem. Yeah, she'd, she would. She'd put some solar panels on the Ukraine and it would be all done. No, exactly. That's it, what you'd say be fine. To, to Putin. Yeah, uh, we'd just meditate on it. But you like your sauce, brother. I, I mean, loved, I love drinking. I, st- I still love it. It just got really, you know, it, got tired of making fourteen thousand dollars a year. And I was with Joe, and I wasn't seeing, you know, look, he was brand- when I met him, he's young, and I saw potential in this kid. And then uh, it sort of stalled for a while, and and then I'm like, oh my god, I saw the drinking and put two and two together, <laughs> and uh, which I don't blame him. He ignored me and Colin Quinn, who has some credibility on this. Sat young Joe down and said, look, this is what you got to do. And I didn't work with Joe for a few months, not intentionally. I just. You right. know, uh, schedules didn't. And all of a sudden, I brought him out to a gig in um, Wyoming or Montana. Was, oh, Montana. I yeah, yeah, yeah. That was days. when you stayed at my house. Yes. Yeah, same Montana. Night. And uh, I hadn't worked with Joe in probably, I don't know, it was like six months. And he goes up there. And I'm expect- expecting sort of the same stuff. All new material. He's standing up straight, full of confidence. <laughs> Seriously, your posture was different. You didn't begin every bit with a quest. I go, what the? And from there on, man, since then, you've been writing new shit. Left and right. Oh, thank you. Seriously. I mean, you, you're doing what you got to do. You're in New York. I mean, tonight show's here now. You got Seth Meyers' new show. Trust me. it's all the, They come looking after a while. Right, so right. You're, you're in the right place. But uh, talk about you shitting in some girl's shoe. Well, I shit in a girl's shoe. Yeah, yeah. That was sort of a low... <laughs> <clears throat> that was that was a low. Now, what kind of shoe was it? Was it a big shoe? I think it was like a Nike high top, and it did, I Did didn't you get fill all it? of it did in there. Did you fill it? I got a little bit in there, and then some <laughs> of it spilled over the sides, and then I traipsed it around a little this bit. It was a all true over. story, folks. It was insane. Yeah, I, I drank. Well, I was like when I was drinking heavy. I did a show at Bar Eighty Two, in the East Village, and then our buddy uh, Jason Canner, my roommate, he bartends across the street. So I'm drinking for free over there, and then I'm drinking for free at Bar Eighty Two. On stage... And I mean drinking, folks. I'm not talking about sipping cocktails. <laughs> I'm not talking about pleasure cruising. I'm talking about working for a living. Exactly. Uh, <clears throat> His gay family. sailing. <laughs> I'm not talking about pleasure yeah. cruising or gay sailing. So go ahead. So I'm drinking there on stage at like... <laughs> a little desk light just came on. Yeah, like you had know. an idea. Look, hey. Oh, wow. Oh, this is nice. So go ahead. So I'm on stage at like 8.30 at night on stage at Barty 2. I'm like, I'm fucking hammered. You ever been, you know, you've been on stage where you're like, oh, wait a minute. I'm fucking shit-faced right now. For about three years of the comedy set. Yeah. So I, I do that. And then <clears throat> I was supposed to meet up with this girl I, I, I had a thing for. She worked at Caroline's. I'd been talking to her in the booth, you know, and I finally got up the balls to ask her via Facebook. We should hang out one night. So we're all going to go out in a group. It's better in a group setting. So I go to Caroline's. I'm drinking there. I do a set. I meet up with her, her roommate. We all go to this bar, Barcelona Bar, which is like a shot bar. At this point, I'm like already shit-faced. I haven't eaten. 
But I'm with these girls. I want to. I want these girls to know that I'm like a fun party guy. So every time somebody offers us a shot, <laughs> yeah, I would do a shot. And it's like this 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 uh, shot bar where like they, you do a Top Gun and they give you little sailor hats and they play or whatever it is. There's a Golden Girl. They play the Golden Girls and you, you kiss old people. It's crazy. So anyways, we got. Shit face there. I had an 11 a.m. flight to Seattle. You, you, you kiss old people? At this point? <laughs> Seriously? I'm, I'm back on that. <laughs> I was kissing an old woman on the lips. Didn't you Didn't you finger Drew McClanahan at a happy hour or something? No. Go ahead. Who's Drew McClanahan? Drew Mc, I mean, Rue. Rue, Rue McClanahan? I don't know who Did that I is. say Drew? Yeah, I think oh so. Oh, my God, am I tired. Rue McClanahan. Golden Girls. Oh, I don't she know. She was the hoary one. I don't I'll just Very know. Very funny show, by the way. But I just know Betty White and the other one that I, you did the roast with. I was, I know, what's her name? The, B. Arthur. Yeah, she's a tight end in high school. <laughs> for the, uh... So anyways, so go ahead. we're shit-faced. I have a flight at 11 a.m. to Seattle for a month. I was doing the Seattle comedy competition. It's like three in the morning, hmm. and I'm like, I'm in and out of black. I'm like brown out drunk at another, this point. Another make or break gig for you. Go yeah. Ahead. So these... Girls, my, they're like, let's go down to the East Village. We got some friends down there. So I'm like, all right, we'll go to the East Village. It'll be great. I don't remember the cab ride. I'm already blacked out the cab ride. I just end up back at the 13th step, ironically is the name. Jason Canner is bartending. And uh, I'm just drinking for free. I'm in and out of blackouts. So how, point, all right, let's cut, how, how many drinks at this point? Probably By the time you get 20, 25. I probably had 10 shots and like 12 beers. It was pretty insane. There you go. That's, that's, that's fraternity stuff for me. And I hadn't eaten or anything, so I'm just a maniac. But this girl, I'm talking to this girl, and I kept being like, you hate me, you hate me, because that's what I would do when oh, I was drinking. Oh, Jesus, I hate people like that. And then Canner leans in, and he's like, you got to stop saying that this girl's into you. That's why she's talking to you. So I was like, all right, you got it. And then I turned around, I was like, you fucking love me. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I switched tunes to you love me. Then I was like, I got to go. I got a flight at 11 in the morning. I leave, and then I just come back 45 minutes later. And they're like, I thought you left. And I was like, I did. This 45 minutes, I'm completely unaccounted for. I could have... And you still don't know. I have no idea. I could have been day. raping people or fighting people. I have no idea. I just disappeared. Then I black out. I wake up. I'm throwing up. And my buddy wakes me up and he's like, hey, we, you got to get it together. We're, gotta, we're at these girls' houses. This house, whatever. And I was like, all right, shit, I got to get beer. So I go in and buy a six pack. This is after 20 drinks. I got to get beer. And I've been throwing up. So we go up into their apartment. That's the last thing I remember. I wake up. I'm in a bed... Yeah. No pants. I can't find my glasses. I can't find my pants. I can't find my shoes. I got to piss so bad. So I'm like, let me piss. Then I'll figure out where I am. Because I was like, it'd be embarrassing if I pissed. This myself. is unbelievable. So you, you don't even know where you are, how you got there. So I'm, I'm, I'm pissing in the bathroom. I have no idea where I'm at. As soon as I, fin I finish pissing, I walk out in the living room. The living room table is just desecrated. And I have that feeling like that was me. For sure. What do you mean desecrated? It's just in pieces. You broke like, it? The legs are broken. firewood? <laughs> yeah, like somebody. Did you really? I just fell. I jumped on it or something. I have, I have no idea what I did. It's just shattered. And, and where's like, the girl at this point? Both girls are She's gone. At a, at a Kia pricing shit? <laughs> They're both gone. And in my mind, I'm like, they left because I was like the Tasmanian devil. I'm fucked. This is when it starts to think You scared me. a woman out of her own house. Well, I think they might have just gone to work, but I, that's what I, my fear was. Oh, now was. it's daytime? It's like 11 o'clock in the morning. Oh, what a depressing, shitty story. Go ahead. It's I like, love it. It's 10.30 in the morning. My flight's at 11, so I'm like, fuck, I got to go. I go back in the bed. I got to find my pants. I go back into this girl's bedroom, who I met that night. I'm sleeping in her bed, and I start f just finding shit everywhere. There's a big puddle of piss, shit. There's footprints of shit, because I've been... Boo, I've been boo, boo, baby. Kaka boo 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 <laughs> baby. I've been traipsing through the shit. Her sneakers in there. It's filled up with shit. I got like literally footprints of shit. Of your own shit. Of my own shit because I was walking through it. I was just walking around like a maniac. I find my pants. I put my pants on. I find my glasses. I put all my clothes on. I try to pick up the shit. I use my sock. I put my sock on like a sock puppet, you know? I'm picking up <laughs> clumps of shit, and then I turn the sock inside out. So, it, so it's like it's like shit in the sock, and I throw that in the trash barrel, and then I tried to, I grabbed like a sponge, oh I tried to clean up God. the shit, but it's like caked to the floor, you know? So I was like, I gotta catch this flight, I'll just leave this amount of shit. 
So I just run out. I grab the socks with the shit. I throw that in like a dumpster outside. And, and here's a story, folks. The girl calls the next thing and goes, Joe, I want to see you again. Which, <laughs> I, got, I think she was German. Wasn't she? <laughs> well, I go. I get shit in the, joke for you. I run to my house to grab my bag. I have a, I'm leaving for a month. My flight leaves in like a half an hour. After finding your own shit all over a girl's apartment, you're only going to stay away a month? Yes. <laughs> Should have moved your fucking house to Brazil with that so I call the girl and I'm like, I'm sorry, I want to kill myself. Like I literally, this is the only time I've in my life I've ever wanted to kill myself. So I'm like, I literally want to kill myself. And she goes, "It's all right. We think it's funny." So I'm like, these fucking girls know how to party, you know? I'm like, these girls are wild. Either that or they, yeah. I guess you could say, are they? <laughs> are they what? Ah, oh, they work in an emergency room and seen everything. <laughs> Really? So, so I get they on, thought it was funny. So I, I missed my flight. They put me on a later flight. I'm like, I'm, I'm like suicidal. I'm just sitting here. I'm covered in my own shit. I get on a new flight. I turn my phone off to fly. I fly six and a half hours to Seattle. I'm like, as I'm on the flight, at one point I cross my legs and I realize there's shit all of my front <laughs> legs. So I'm just flying across the country covered in feces. <laughs> Excuse me. So... So I get to Seattle, I turn my phone back on, it's been off for six and a half hours, and I, that's when I get the messages from them being like, we had no idea how bad this, you're a fucking asshole, you owe us a new oh, pair of sneakers. they changed their mind? Then, well, well, here's they the found, thing. What, they found some shit on the ceiling? No. That's where they draw the line? Here's what? the thing, they, this happened after they left for work. I shit in this girl's shoe at like 10 in the morning. I was just still blacked out. So that when they, they left, maybe the table was broken and I, was, I had been like, Oh, ah, they hadn't woo. found the shit yet? No, so they went and worked like a day. They worked from like 9 to 5. It's still an accident. Then they work at night. They come home at 10 o'clock at night, and their house is just f- marinating in my human shit. And I, I tried scrimming up. They had to like get down on their hands and knees and like scrape up shit. And then there's just piss. I don't even know how you do that. You have to like defumigate your rug or whatever. Oh, I wonder what they had. They probably called Harvey Keitel to come in. <laughs> It must have been bad, so I ended up sending them a birthday card. I wrote like a long <laughs> apology. I put three hundred dollars in cash. I called my buddy Nate Bargetti. I was like, "It's three hundred bucks too have much." You, have you ever talked to this chick again? Yeah, well, I, had, I almost ended up going on a date <laughs> with the girl. I gotta see this thing. I was gonna she's go. Gotta be a troll. I got, she's very pretty. I was oh, gonna go on a on. date. I got someone gave me tickets to go see Letterman, and I was gonna go. I was gonna take her. She was in. She was down. But then she like had something come up like the next day. She's like, I'm so sorry. I'm not making this up. I, uh, fucking whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm, I'm bad with girls, so I never pursued it any further. The one girl, the girl that I had a thing for, I think hated me. She hated me. But her friend, the roommate, whose room I actually shit in, thought it was kind of sweet. It's like, it's like natural. It's like a nature thing. I fucking marked my territory. I've she was never, into it. I've, I've had girls not have me back because I spilled a beer on their couch. Well, luckily they were 22 years old. Never if they mind. were in their 30s, I would have been sued. And never mind dropping up. corn dogs <laughs> all over the fucking house and in their shoes. So I sent them 300 bucks and a long apology. It was a very sincere <laughs> apology. I have it on Facebook somewhere. <laughs> it was bad news bears. And then, well, here's the crazy part. This is where alcoholism not- comes in. That day, I remember being in Seattle going like this. I better not drink tonight. I'll take a night off. I should take a night off from drinking. Yeah. And then later that night, I was like, well, I'm going to drink again eventually anyway, so I might as well start drinking. So I was drinking that night again. What amazes me, and again, I don't mean uh, you know this scatological uh, <laughs> story that we're on, but uh, to prolong this, but uh, surprised me there was that much uh, feces found all over the place with your tiny asshole syndrome. Well, that's the thing. I think I had... Joe, Joe doesn't... Uh, <clears throat> Joe doesn't move his bowels well, and he's convinced that he has a tiny asshole. I think I have a very tiny asshole. I've well, never I mean, had how, any uh, fingers or penises in there, well, and I think... And that's... that's is that what you use to I, decide? I think it's anxiety. It's puckered up permanently. Oh, so you're, 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 you're uh, literally anal. That's like the definition of an anal. Yeah, yeah, anal retentative. Isn't that what that means? Yeah. My anal is retentive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I don't think there's a big... Um, a big range of asshole sizes, I'm saying. I, I think What do you is. think? Yours is mine three inches wider than yours? It's like five eighths you know what or mean? whatever. <laughs> I, think, I, think it's, I think I have a small ass because I've been taking this He's fiber shit. He's serious about this. You gave me this fiber business. I've yeah, been, I've husk. Been, yeah, I've been eating it with cereal. I've eaten, I'm eating it by the box. And you said you texted me, and again, not to get too gross here, but uh, who cares? But you did say you were taking comical dumps, well, which I, was, I, I took as large. I took some big ones and some wide, but they're like, like big ones, but they're still, I don't have, 
have the one you've described, and I don't want to gross out the whole audience yeah, here, but let's not get. They're not. Th- I want like a calf muscle. The way you're oh, describing I, them, oh, you're they're talking like, about girth wise. Yeah, yeah. The you, way you're talking, you're talking be, about explosion. You're like spray painting the bull. They're wild. Yeah, yeah, they're wild. But oh. the, I but, want like but a Joe. Big... Joe grew up on mac and cheese, and I saw him eat when we were in uh, Wisconsin at a club. I saw him buy a box of mac and cheese that could have fed Uganda. And he, you know, he every day he had one of those. It, was, would it eat, literally could have f- fed six people. I would eat like four or five times a week. Like mac a full, and cheese out of a like box. The craft. The craft. Yeah. Right. Your sphincter is going to rust out like a, like a fucking tailpipe on a city bus in December. Uh, I know. I get scared every time I talk to you. I think I'm going to have ass cancer. I'm well, sure I'm, of it. I'm hoping. But look, a lot of fast food, too. <laughs> fast food and mac and cheese. He's a comedian. There's no doubt about it. That's just so depressing, waking up in your own shit, then having to fly to Seattle. I don't know what's more depressing about that story. Well, did you ever tell that story when we had to share the condo in Wisconsin because the, uh, the flight thing was in town? There was an air show in town, well, so yeah. there was no hotels. Yeah, so we had to share a condo. So we had I don't, to share I don't remember anything well, remarkable happening other than watching you eat. What about the Chris Rock thing? That was hilarious. Oh, you he calls that? me. We, we, That's were sitting, right. we were sharing the condo, and life on the road, very boring. We're in Appleton, Wisconsin. There's nothing to do. We're sharing a condo. It's hilarious. We had a million laughs. Yeah. We're flicking through the channels. We have like eight channels. Somehow the Mets game, they're not even playing the Brewers. It's just like the Mets game is randomly on That's TV. Right. That's and we're right. like, we're celebrating. We're like, all right, Mets. This is three hours. That's, we can kill the game. That's right. This is going to be great. We're high-fiving. We got popcorn. We're like, this is great. We'll kill the whole day. We'll watch the Mets game. Yeah. As the opening pitch is happening, Chris Rock calls you and invites you to sit in his box seat with Louis C.K. Who, who I hadn't I hadn't talked to Chris in a year, probably. <laughs> so it just completely ruined the vibe. Instead of us being excited for the game, and you're how just you, miserable. How do you think I felt when I had to say to Chris Rock and, and, and to Louis, no, I can't. I'm playing, uh, what's, what was the name of the club? Skyline. Skyline Comedy Club in Appleton, Wisconsin. They blew my ears out. They were laughing so hard. <laughs> And I, I hung up the phone, and I went in the bedroom, and I cried for an hour and a half. I was like, say my name. Mention my that, name. <laughs> yeah. Joe, well, that's my career. That's my life in a nutshell. I told you. I, I went. Chris Rock called me one time, and, and at the last minute when I was living in Queens, said, hey, meet me meet me at City Field before it was City Field. Shea Stadium. Right. Uh, oh, was it City? No, it was uh, Shea Stadium. Meet, meet me at the ballpark. I get Mets take. He called me the last minute on like a Sunday. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, beautiful. I get there. It's him and Seinfeld. Yeah. Me, Chris Rock, and Seinfeld. We go to the Mets game. And then like a week later in People Magazine, there's a picture. You <laughs> I can always see, tell the story. You can see Chris Rock, Jerry Seinfeld, and like my left eyebrow, the corner of it. <laughs> there, there, is, there, is my, there is my career in a nutshell. That's hilarious. But uh, that was a blast, man. Watching, I was watching Jerry blow off autograph seekers oh I think that's you meant. what i like about jerry he's kind of a little prickly sometimes and I, I like that i watched a guy fight his way i told you this they, they posted somebody at the top of our aisle to yeah. stop people from coming down right right and this is like in the sixth seventh inning and i'm i just happened to lay my eyes on this guy that was 100 yards away and he's fighting his way through you know stepping over people cutting through rows instead of walking along you know right the aisles and it literally took him 18 minutes to get to us. And he goes to Jerry, Mr. Sonic, getting on And Jerry goes, no, sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. That made me so happy. That's great. It made me laugh. Just to see Jerry didn't want to be bothered. <laughs> uh, good guy. Uh, Joey, sports-wise, um, here's, what, uh, here's one of the reasons I, uh, I brought Joe on the road with me when I finally loved college football like I did. Yeah, I love college football. It's, it's rare that New Englanders are into college football. That's true. People always ask me what my team is. I'm like, I don't have a team. That's why I enjoy it so much. Although I root for BC. When I do too. Pedestrianly. I love uh, if that's watching a word. BC. But tell them, tell them why you like it better than the NFL. I li- Well, first of all, every, every rule difference. And I like having this argument while there's no one here because everyone gets all up and at them. But I, first of all, every rule difference that's different between college football and the NFL, I think is better in college football. Personally, the hash marks being wide, farther apart Holy is much shit, better. Holy shit, really put you, some thought into you it. You open up the field See, more. See, I like it because of the cheerleaders, 18-year-old tits. Go it ahead. makes the field goals more difficult. I think and we, I think you and I differ on this rule, but I'm very adamant about it. Yeah. The one foot in bounds, to me, two feet in bounds is the most arbitrary rule in all of sports. In, in college football, you a receiver only has to have one foot in bounds for it to be a completion. But it's a little more complicated, but, right? It's, it's a little more complicated, and I think it's been changed... <laughs> 
And, and I, I don't even know the rule exactly. In, in football, you used to be able to knock a guy out of bounds. Or do I have it wrong? Is that in college? If a guy goes up for a ball in the air and you drill them out of bounds, I think it's the NFL. I think college, you're allowed to do that. Is that what it is? I believe. But I get them confused. Me too. I get confused myself. <laughs> That's why I'm watching youth football now. There must have been two dozen Peters and Pauls at the wedding. <laughs> I get confused myself. Uh, I think you can knock them out in college football. But the one foot college football, to me, that rule... If you have one foot out of bounds, you're out of bounds. So if you, I think if you have one foot in bounds, it's a catch. Well, I, I like think, that rule better. I, I, I think I, I don't care either way. No. But I, I'm saying I think because they're pros and supposed to be at another level, right. they make it more difficult. It's harder to get two feet down. But right? my, but Isn't my, that the mentality? That's the mentality. But if that's yeah. the mentality, why don't you say well, we don't use face masks or you gotta, you got to have your shoes tied together? I mean, there's other things that make it difficult, no, too. Let's not go crazy, you gotta, Joe. I mean, you got to play with no pants on. No face mask. Somebody might break their nose. <laughs> uh, Mr. Official, let me ask you something. How can six of you miss a play like that, huh? All six of you. The ball jumped out of there as soon as we made contact. I thought you were talking about you being on the field. No. What? Who is that? Hank Stram. <laughs> Hank Stram, baby. No. What? KC Chiefs, he used to wear the suit jacket with a little pocket on it with a designer. No cursing. Um, oh, the other rule I think that we might differ on also yeah. that I hate is in college football, if you're down, you're down. However you got on the ground, that's the end of the play. You're on the fucking ground. Right. The NFL is my least favorite rule in football. If you slip and fall, you can just get up and keep running. You I could like actually that. crawl on your hands and knees. Right. In the end of, right. That, to me, is silly. You're Why? on the ground. So what? Because you're punished. If nobody put you down, which is the name of the game, you should be able to get up and go. Nick, the name of the game is football. I think we all know that. That's I love, what football is football. I love the Grinch still Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> John Facenda. Wow. Everybody tries to imitate him. He's been dead forever. Wow. He was the voice of NFL films. And uh, that, that, that poem... It was an actual poem. Wow, that was uh, intense. Isn't that awesome? The Raiders used that for their thing. Wow. You, Joe was born in uh, 1982. 1982, yeah. See, yeah. I was a Raiders fan in like 72. The good old days. When they were real criminals. Yeah. Them and the Steelers would get together. Remember? They'd knock, they'd knock Len Swan out on the first play of the game. Guy got up, George Atkinson ran up behind him and sucker punch. You know, <laughs> forearm to the head, unconscious. And then they had to go to court. After the game, they had, you know, after the season was over, st- the Steelers and Raiders had to go to court. I mean, the coaches were called in and subpoenaed and everything. Jesus. And and um, this is when the Steelers were nasty, too. Right. It was the best rivalry in sports in the history, in my opinion. And they asked uh, Chuck Knoll if his defensive backs, some of his plays were they criminal elements. And he said yes. Wow. <laughs> she was- and the Raiders were the filthiest, dirtiest team. And I, for some reason, I love... My dad always liked the bad guys, you yeah. know, in movies and stuff. Like Jimmy Conway. Typical Guinea. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, so my old man always loved the Raiders, and I kind of, you know... Yeah. Who, what, what do you think the best rivalry in professional sports is right now? Oh, that's easy. <laughs> well, I think it's it. the Flyers and Penguins, personally. I feel like you're going to have a sarcastic answer. I was going to say, uh, the, the Royals and the A's. <laughs> Well, the Philadelphia. I'm kidding. You think it's what? I think Flyers and Penguins. I think uh, that, I think in, I think in professional sports rivalries ebb and flow and change. No, you're right. College the football. Yankees, red, you're right. Yeah, there's tradition in college football and they're interstate and it's all that shit yeah. and they're inter- right. recruited, so it lasts forever. Right. Professional, I think it it, it, it sort of comes and goes. I, red Sox and Yankees is always classic, but it's sort of down right here's now. Here's why, though, and I'll, and I'll add to that, and I agree with that. Uh, but the the reason is free agency. Right. You see what I'm saying? Like yeah, you said, with, with college sports, <clears throat> okay, the players change every four years. But, but, you know, when the Yankees Red Sox back in the 70s, it was the same guys every right, year. Right. Munson hated Fisk. Right. And they saw each other, you know, 18 times a year for like 10 years. Right. And we even had another heyday, the 99 through 04, because they were the two top dogs and then the block scheduling, whatever the hell that's called. Or, yeah. And so they played each other, you know, 18 times plus seven and a rug get in thrown into the mix, and that that was amazing. And the evil empire, you had all that shit. But it you don't see tremendous. as much of it. But but yeah, as far and, and as Pedro really stirred things up. That's as well. right, throwing down a octogenarian, <laughs> um, <laughs> which I love by the way, and I love Zimmer too. I love both. But uh, as far yeah, as far as and and here's one you won't 
you probably don't even remember Kansas City Chiefs, Hank Stram that I just played, yeah. and the Raiders. Well, that's that's what bothers me now. That they still the, play that up as a rivalry. Yeah, like, Chiefs Raiders, Same. the rivalry. I'm like, that's not a rivalry it's at all. all. Shit, Giants Redskins. They do that. Giants shit. Cowboys. Exactly. Come on. So it has to ebb and flow. And like it's all for marketing. a while. Like I thought the Patriots and Jets was a great rivalry because you had you know the Belichick and the Parcells business yeah. and Curtis Martin. Yeah. So it has to sort of go, like right now San Francisco and Seattle is the best rivalry in football to me. NFL football. Well, Steelers and Ravens, I should say. That's been amazing the last 10 Steelers, years. Steelers, Ravens, yeah. Because they're similar that styles, had... and, they're, and they're fairly close to each other geographically, and you had, you know. Now, you think that's more of a better rivalry than, like, the Bills and the Texans? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm talking about, and you're exactly right. It is, it's watered down. That's why, I mean, I love the 70s, because... I mean, if it wasn't if you if if you weren't watching the Raiders and the Steelers who really hated each other, I right. mean, constantly for decades, and you put on the Chiefs and the uh, Chiefs and Raiders, or I mean, it was really like, or or Giants Cowboys, they really disliked each other. Right. Well, again, I think free agency is what changed it most because it was the same guys. Right. Like a guy, uh, you know, the Stork Hendricks, Ted Hendricks, speared. <laughs> Speared Len Dawson in the back, yeah, you know, and started a brawl on the field. And you know, the next time they play each other, and they and they in the and they held grudges for like years on end, right? Which, which Anytime is time is a good battle. That's why hockey is great because you get rivalries because people are fighting each other and it, that shit lingers. It's great. This you, I think you even mentioned it to me behind the B that show. Oh yeah, I love that again, show. Again, mo- you mo- most of you folks who don't uh, get New England sports network, but. Uh, a, a show about the Bruins right now, and uh, they played on the... NHL Network. I have NHL Network; it's the best thing I've ever purchased in my life. I get it with my uh, pack. I get it free, actually. Uh, they, um, how about pol- how polite the, the hockey players are, even on the ice when they're banging? That's all changed too since I was a kid. Right, right. You hear them going, "Oh, C- Crosby's like, no, come on, man, you did that to me too." Right, right. This is them like almost in a fight. Oh, come on, man, you didn't have to do that. Yeah. These are polite Canadian. I You're, mean, <laughs> Crosby sounds like my roommate. Your version of Crosby. That's how he talks. Hello. Okay, I'm laying it on a little thick. I'm Jesus, sorry, Joe. Who am I? I'm sorry, I'm not Rich Little. Um, <laughs> But my point is, they're so polite. Com- yeah, I saw one compared that- to the trash talking in the NFL and the NHL and the uh, NBA and NHL tonight played. They played like the Canadians, whatever their show is in their locker room, and there was a guy fighting, and he's like, and they're at the they're at the face off, and he's like, "You looking for a fight?" And he's like, ah, "I'm just I'm looking to go home." Yes, he's I like, saw that. I'm like, looking I'm, to I'm go down, home. I'm down seven one. I'm just looking to go home. He's like, "I'm going to keep playing like this. If you if you feel like you're going to find me, come find me." I love that. Speaking of fight. Yeah. Tell the people about the time that you and I were working in Rhode Island and my buddy Vinny Pazienza showed up. Oh, Jesus. I'm scared to say this publicly. I'm, I think he's going to listen and find me. I'm terrified of that fucking guy. <laughs> Vinny Pazienza, folks, was a uh, champion, world champion boxer in the 90s. Champion of the world. If you want to know about Vinny Pazienza, Google image him. You'll find a thing with him like a crazy neck brace. With the bolts into his head. He broke his yeah, neck. Yeah, and he's doing deadlift. He's deadlifting, deadlifting. like 400 pounds with, with, with bolts with in his With bolts head. in his skull because he had broken his neck. It's terrifying. And uh, him and Greg Haugen were a, a great rivalry. And he's a badass, Vinny. Just a badass from Rhode Island. Yeah. And, and he always, he, apparently he's a fan of mine. And he come, every time I come to Rhode Island, and, and, and he, Joe, he would come to my show. And, and then I, so me and Joe were performing there. I went home after the show. Yeah. Because I know you were drinking there. I was drinking heavily. <laughs> and I know Vinny likes his sauce. Yeah, Vinny was drinking. When I was drinking, we were all hanging out. This is and what East happened? Providence. I still never heard the... What what triggered this? It was no trigger, no trigger. We're all just, just hanging alcohol. out. We're all just hanging out, and uh, there's like eight of us, six of us, whatever. And all of a sudden, Pazienza, uh, former champion of the world, <laughs> is just like Can you, I- comedian. I'm going to fuck you up. <laughs> and uh, I'm a nervous guy. I'm a scared guy. I'm not a fighter. And uh, so I was just like, well, what? Why, why is he saying this? And everyone, and like his, this is the scariest part. You didn't his do girlfriend. Anything. Is it possible that you were so drunk that you might you know, no, no, hit, I remember hit this. on his like, girlfriend or something? No, we were just didn't hanging out. you call out him a greasy talking. guinea fuck? I think, I think I was just. You called him a grease ball. I was just having fun and charming. And, uh, you know, we're just hanging out. I think this happened. But the, what was terrifying, I saw his <laughs> girlfriend's face. And she had this faith of, like, Vinny, no. And judging by her reaction, I was like, oh, this happens a lot. She sees this happen. Yeah, oh, and that's yeah. that's what terrified me. She's like a stripper. And then some guy was like, I oh, don't worry. He gets like this. I'm like, he gets like this. I'm like, gets, gets like this. He's going to fucking, 
he's going to kill me. So I had to like hide upstairs, and people were like holding him back. This is Vinny Pazienza. The guy fought why, fucking why Roy these, Jones Jr. It, it's gotta, we got to be missing something here. I swear to God, he's just a bit of a nut. I mean, the guy's a bit of a nut. Well, there's he's no doubt about it. professional fighter. And uh, then the best, my favorite part of the whole story was later on. Eventually, they, they got him to leave, and I was like hiding upstairs, crying, you know. And uh, I was talking to my <laughs> uncle. I was talking to my uncle the next day, and he's like, "Yeah, he was, if he was that drunk, he's like, people can't fight when they're that drunk. You would have been fine." Like he was. My uncle's implying that I could have beat There's him up. Good Irish wisdom. Yeah, like it's the reason Joe shits in girls' shoes. At what point of me hitting Vinny Pazienza that he would have been like, "All right, I'm sorry, you win." I'm like, I'm not. The guy's the. That was another thing. The bartender goes, he's just drunk. And I'm like, well, he's not just drunk. He's well, drunk in addition to being the champion of the well, world yeah. and beating people up. Exactly. And he's pissed right and now. It's not, Mills Lane wasn't also at the bar. I'm just going to get fucking <laughs> annihilated. <laughs> so it was, I, uh, it was terrifying. I yeah. couldn't believe when you told me that. I'm still I, scared of him. I'm scared of this right now. I'm going to change my name and move to Peru. I got his number. We'll call him. Okay. We'll smooth things over nice. Uh, you know, you shake his hand and uh, what's Tommy say? Uh, yeah, it's, it's all forgotten, supposedly. <laughs> it's all forgotten. What's that guy's name? Nick? Nick Cust- Costamacus? Yeah. Or something. Yeah. Uh, coach from Cheers. Coach from Cheers. Yeah. Tremendous actor. Been dead about 111 years. But uh, that was one of my favorite stories. I thought you were kidding me when you told me that. No, no. It was terrifying. Uh, he had that that fucking look in his eye where like, I'm like, there's nothing I can do. I'm going to get killed. My biggest fear is getting beat up. Which is, you know, that helps, sobriety helps not having to worry about getting beat up too much. No, it's good. I'm still terrified. I'm terrified of, like, Twitter. They can find you. These people, these some of these ONA lunatic fans that will probably call me a faggot for voting for Jill Stein. I'm scared yeah. they're going to find me at some show. And, for. and uh, you know, so pull my, my underwear over my head. My garage is for. I see myself dying uh, on my property in a showdown with the government. <laughs> When I'm like 70. Like, uh, you ever seen, well, I know you're a movie buff, Legends of the Fall. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that that well, though. But Anthony Hopkins and Brad Pitt is like a half Cherokee, his son, remember? Right. And uh, and Anthony Hopkins, they live in, you know, wherever, Montana or Wyoming, one of those states that you and I played. Right. And, uh, you know, he's very anti-government. He was a military guy. And, um, he, you know, there's a showdown at the end, but. Anthony Hopkins said that has a stroke, and he's like, oh, yeah. screw him, screw him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, and there's a shootout. They kill like two FBI, three FBI guys on their property at the end. Right. That's how I'm going to go now. I think you're going to die I'm, like Vito Corleone right outside the studio here, just clipping some flowers out there, <laughs> and then slowly you're just going to fall into the bush and into the creek, and then like the neighbor's going to come running over. By the way, that run... Watch it again. I mean, you've seen it a million times. The run that little Anthony does after Corleone dies in the first Godfather, it's yeah. fucking hilarious. Oh, and he's got the, he, the little legs. When he, when he like, falls boop, over? Boop, 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 boop. Yeah. When he falls over on the tomato plant? Yes. Oh, and the yeah. the kid runs away. And then if you're watching it in a group, my, when my he runs. laughs at that. When he runs, you just go, lo, 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 and it, it's a big laugh. My wife laughs at he the way like the kid boop. runs out of there. Yeah, he's got little ass He looks like a old footage of Babe Ruth. I'll tell you what it looks like. That was me and my grandfather. Seriously, oh, I, I, oh, I was no. that. I was a little kid like that. My grandfather was dressed just like Vito <laughs> Corleone. He's dressed in that scene, right? You know the old, the old gray like slack, yeah, yeah. whatever pants, work pants, and uh, the cardigan sweater or whatever. Right. And uh, I told you, my grandfather fell down and split his head open when I was working on them. I was a kid. Yeah, oh, Jesus. And uh, you know, could have taken a few stitches. So what's he do? He packed dirt in. He packed dirt in the wow. cut to stop the bleeding. That's like Lone Survivor. Have you seen Lone Survivor? Not yet, but that's oh, my next spectacular. one. Yeah. That's really Let's good. Let's talk about that. It's a good segue with the uh, Oscars. Ooh, it's Oscars a big day tonight. for the fruitcakes out there. So uh, I'm a big Oscar fag. Not to use that language. Yeah. I can't vote for Jill Stein and then say fag. What's wrong you with me? You can say anything you want. This is All America. Right. Okay? Well, it's a big day for the fruit cups. I'm, I'm not gay, but I love the Oscars. I do too. I recorded them every year, and uh, I'm really excited about I it. I don't... Uh, uh, I don't. Uh, when I was in L.A., when I thought really I was going to end up in the movies, you know, right. I'd make sure to see all the ones that were being nominated. Yeah. Now I'm a little la- and lax like that, but I did make an effort this year. Yeah. Um, Twelve Years a Slave, I stayed away from just because of the knockout game. It's my way of boycotting. <laughs> I have a uh, black uh, compassion fatigue that I can't feel sorry anymore for anybody. And um, but uh, you know, I saw Gravity a couple nights ago here. Yeah. And um, what'd you think? Best part was seeing Sandra, you know, Bullock floating around in tight shorts for 10 minutes. Yeah, that's exciting. But I, I couldn't. Uh, <clears throat> I know you got to suspend your disbelief when right. you watch a movie like that. Right. But uh, I mean, I, I know wives who almost crumble when they have their period. <laughs> Never mind 
surviving a fucking astro explosion being hit by Russian. What was it? I don't know. What, something, to do with, something to do with the Ukraine. I don't know. No, no, no. It was just too much for me to believe, to even grasp. It was entertaining. Well, for I me, get it. I thought I, it was. I like Sandy Bullock. I thought it was like entertaining her. and exciting, but it's hard for me. Same thing with. I can't put myself in that position. I don't know what it's like to be in space. So I, I didn't. It wasn't that uh, dramatic for me. I couldn't. I don't know. I, I can't imagine being in space. It would be terrifying just to be in space, let alone lost in space or whatever. Oh, it wasn't much different than you waking up not knowing where you were and shitting all over the <laughs> Yeah, there was a lot of debris flying. And, uh... <laughs> no, I watched it. It was entertaining enough. And I'm sure, look, maybe I didn't get the full um, effect because I watched on a, a black and white six inch TV. <laughs> so I don't. Um, um, Wolf of Wall Street. I actually went last week myself on like a Thursday night and drove. I loved it. And it was a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah a lot of fun. A- entertaining movie. N- not, you know, I mean, it was a little shallow. I mean, okay, he was he was out of control, like, you know. Right. And um, But I, I, I enjoy watching a guy out of control. It was kind of uh, liberating to see a rich guy go, fuck you, I'm on drugs. Let's, right, right. Let's, it was kind of liberating. So uh, as far as DiCaprio, I mean, I, I love him, but I think he could have done that role in a sleep, right? But he's spectacular. I thought he was great, all coked up, giving those speeches. I was getting fired up. But that's easy for a guy with that talent, I think. You know what I mean? I mean, I think it was. I don't think it was that challenging a role. And uh, I think Matthew McConaughey is going to get it. I think McConaughey's going to win. Hollywood loves AIDS. They're huge <laughs> AIDS, AIDS fans. slavery. Um, yeah, but what else? I think AIDS. I think Twelve Years a Slave will win Best Picture. If the slave had AIDS, it would win Best Picture. Oh, slave with AIDS. Forget about it. Yeah, it would, they would win, it it would win two years in a row. Um, so what do you think is going to get Best Picture? I think 12 Years a Slave is going to get Best Picture. I, I would think so. And th- th- this is why I don't really put much credence into the Academy, because too much of that horse shit. You know what I mean? It, it, it's about what they believe in. If movies are about causes that they believe uh, you know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about. Right. If it's really PC subject matter, they eat it up, when that shouldn't enter into how they're thinking. Right. You know what I mean? They never. Let's say there was a. Let's say there was a documentary about uh, Phil Rizzuto. Right. That the whole world loved. God, the guys at the Academy are gonna. I agree. You know what I mean? But uh, so f- I agree that gives that picture the edge. But if there's gonna be a surprise, what would it be if it's not twelve years? Well, I hope it's not. Amer- I thought American Hustle was a piece of shit. I thought it was. I I, I didn't. Boy, I didn't see the any. I, I look. I thought it was the most overrated movie I've ever seen of, in my life. I kind of felt that way, but I'm not like, you know, I'm not a movie critic, and I, but I didn't, well, I felt like I was missing something. I, I didn't I didn't get it. I just thought it was, I didn't think it was funny. I wasn't invested in any character. I didn't like That's any character I more felt. than the other one. That's and then the, how I felt. The big payoff, it was just like, oh, yeah, we were in a different office, and I just didn't understand it. I didn't get it. I, 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 nothing, it did nothing for me. I think that Hollywood has a hard on for that uh, David O. Russell director. Of course. And then, they, of course, they, all those people are hot. Amy Adams is hot, and uh, Christian Bale, and Bradley Cooper. And and they're all uh, great. They're good. Lawrence. Yeah, Jennifer Lawrence, of course. She, she might, I think she might get best. Would that be actress or supporting? I think she was supporting. Yeah. Yeah. She was, I, my she favorite was pretty movie, good in that. Philomena was my favorite movie of the year. I like I Philomena. Again, again, I can't help but. Uh, and, uh, great story and stuff, but I'm like, okay, but why is Hollywood fixated on Catholicism when there's another religion doing horrible things to gay people? And, uh, I mean, really, you're taking a swipe at Reagan? It's 2014. Let it fucking go! Well, it's, Let it go! Hollywood's behind. We'll do all the Muslim movies later. We'll loan Survivor. That's about... Hollywood's behind. No, they're not behind. They're just not going to go near it. They're ballless. Lone Survivor. They they're killing die. Muslims in Lone Survivor. That's something. People were upset about that. Muslim they're, people they're getting ambushed. I I, I I agree. I'm just saying. That's not. Uh... Uh, Philomena you know is enjoyable saying? though. It was oh, it was absolutely it's funny. There's laughs. There's that that birth scene is the most disturbing scene I've ever seen in my life. What was that? She I was out gives... getting popcorn. <laughs> what happened? Was there a baby involved? She in gives birth. The reverse birth. It was terrifying. They didn't really zoom in on it. You were acting like you saw the. No, I saw some lips. You did. <laughs> it was wild. Yeah, I saw the director's cut. Uh, it was in a uh, it was in a porn theater in the East Village. <laughs> no, that was a good story. Good story, story, but I mean, yeah, they got a malign. You know, it's just I, again, it's to me it rings hollow when you have uh, another religion causing havoc all over the earth. To, to but anyways, how about Captain Phillips? You like Captain? I Phillips? like Captain Phillips. That guy's nominated for best supporting actor, first movie he's ever been in. Yeah, I know. Never it's like you get him. same reason you get bumped off Last Comic Standing. <laughs> 
Weren't you replaced by a yeah. a pirate from uh what was <laughs> from it? Somalia? Yeah. A Somalian yeah. pirate. I had a joke about Somalian pirates, and I can't remember what it was for the life of me. I was doing it. Remember those interview guys interviewed <laughs> hey, us at Foxwoods? All right, you can't like, remember jokes, so let's let, we'll play we'll play a joke. It's the fourth show in a row I've played the. I thought that was well, a clip from your new album. You no, know, you know what's funny? That was actually appropriate. We were talking about Captain Phillips. It was a boat joke. That was pretty good. I actually, I have four Paul Lynn clips here. I just happened to hit that one. Uh, remember Paul Lynn? Paul Lynn's a big gay, right? Oh, the funniest guy alive, though. Yeah. One of the funniest. I say, though, like gay, can't, you know, gay people can't be funny. But he he's dead hilarious. now, right? Oh, hell yeah. He's been dead forever. Died of AIDS. Uh, yeah. Back then they called it cancer. But um, oh boy, no! Don't you find you set me up beautifully? You do. You brought up uh, Captain Phillips, and I had a boat joke. Perfect. Come on, I might submit this show to the Academy Cap- of Radio and uh... Captain Phillips. Evidently, a big asshole. Oh yeah, well obviously. So we will say, my buddy sailed with him. <laughs> you buddy, are you hanging out with Alan Hale? <laughs> really? Uh, yeah, I'm serious. Uh, I, I, I friends with all these merchant marines. I read all that in the paper. I mean, they they said he was a real yeah, he's Mama a, Luke. He's a real dick. I'm look of the year. You got to be uh, so Captain Phil, but I enjoyed it. But Tom Hanks, you know, I thought he should have been nice. He was a spectacular at the end. That's how you know, he's got two under his belt. They're like, yeah, know. exactly. He's got to make uh, another AIDS movie, but he'll get another one when he gets old. It's all that shit. When he's old and comes back, they'll they'll play one for him. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, Robert Redford in uh, All Is Lost. I called you and said this is a shit performance. I think he stinks. And what do you, what do you have to say about Robert Redford? I've been saying that since I was twelve. <laughs> Seriously, I saw him in Barefoot in the Park. I was 12 and I this guy sucks. Sometimes I he think... He can't act to save his fucking life. Sometimes I think the general public is just like the industry, where they just need to hear it first, and then they're like, yeah, all right, I think that too. We got to get the word out on this Robert Redford. And I'll tell you who's next, George Clooney. Very he, one-dimensional. You just brought up two of the biggest liberals in Hollywood. You just, see, do you see how who gets rewarded what? He's it, just... A, George Clooney is just... He's just George Clooney all the time. Nah, no acting I, chops. I like Clooney. He's okay, nah, but he's, he's not an great. old-fashioned movie star. I like that he's he's got Redford the good, can't carry his goddamn. But Clooney's got the good looks, and I love that he. Fu- I like Clooney. He seems like a fun guy. He's a prankster. He doesn't get married. He fucks all the chicks. Does he ever? But, Lake Como's filled with his jizz. But Monuments Men is the worst <laughs> piece of shit I've ever seen. I wouldn't go see. Hey, I'm look, on the road. I got time. I got time to kill, baby. I don't drink art. It just sounds boring. I would watch my wife chase art. It Here's stinks. a paint by numbers. I'll throw it in the <laughs> front lawn. Go get it. It I, stinks. Uh, but Redford stinks. That movie all is lost. He can't act. He never could. <laughs> he stinks. Butch Cassidy. He was all right. Yeah, so, great movie. The but, sting. He's pretty good. Ah, stingy, stinky. <laughs> Which American Hustle is just trying to be the sting. Is that I'm what that real, was trying to be? I'm a real film fag here. I feel like I'm going to catch a lot of flack from your fans. You got rabid, angry fans. No. Are you the other one saying fag all the time? I said fag twice, three times oh, you've now. You've thrown it out unbelievable today, 11, 12 times. But I also voted for Jill Stein. So I did too, right. by the way. And I, and I said Matthew McConaughey should win Best Actor. So I What's think that got right. to do? He's not gay. He plays a gay. No, he doesn't. And I love the... He doesn't uh, play gay. Oh, yeah, he, he plays a guy who hates gay. Whatever. <laughs> See that? You just assumed he was gay because yeah, his character had AIDS. That's stereotypical horseshit. That's know? my least favorite part of that movie, by the way, is when he puts the fucking big redneck in the arm lock. The guy's had AIDS for like nine years, and he just puts a cowboy like, oh, in yeah, a, a no, lock. You're like, know. this seems a little ridiculous. His arm would have broken off like a well-cooked chicken wing. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> Speaking of which, are we eating here? I'm starving. All right. Oh, Andy. My. Do you hear this guy? I know. Yeah, the show's a... You know, we can cut it here, but... Uh, well, I'm having fun. It's not... A, I know. You're full of good stories. I got some stories. I have a podcast called Tuesdays with Stories. Can I plug it? Go ahead. I'd love to have you do it sometime. I will do it. All right. But just, uh, you know me. I have to I have to change flights to get to the city. Uh, I live I'm, I live six minutes from Albany. It's not... Uh, I was just in Albany last week. Yeah, I heard. It's a fun club. Yeah. <laughs> Insulting offers. It's not big enough for them. You, I know you brought it up and said it's much better, but uh, it's a great room because it, it seats like one sixty. So it's like a it's like a city club. It's fucking hot. Joe, I don't get out of my bed for five, less than five times. You know. Oh boy. But, uh, well, well. Anyways, I have a podcast called Tuesdays with Stories. It's available. Is that on a iTunes. play on Tuesday with Maury? Tuesdays with Maury. That's a People play hate on the it? title. One guy tweeted at me. He said <laughs> the show is as great as the title is bad. <laughs> so people love what? the show. He they hit complimented the... you. Yeah, uh, I'm sure there are other comments. That's the worst one you can give us. Oh, some people making fun of the. Title. I don't. I don't recognize these people. That some of these people, are these internet trolls from these these, uh, they they say really mean things to me. But well, that's uh, why I'm telling them. you, you got to load up. So <laughs> you do. You get on your front lawn and just. 
How about this? I know you love these sort of uh, things. I tweeted the other day, Kerry Kennedy found innocent. I said everything always works out well for the Kennedys. And then I get some retweets, whatever. Someone tweets at me. Yeah, except for the part where they die young and horribly. So you were being so ironic. I, so I wrote they back. pick up on your irony. So I wrote back. Right? I go, what do you mean? Which ones? And then she didn't respond. I did that one time when Steve Jobs died. I said, tonight I'm donating all my CD sales to the family of Steve Jobs. And some, <laughs> some woman writes, I don't think he needs it. Uh, he's a billionaire. <laughs> oh, that's, that's why Colin Quinn is the master of uh, the yeah, universe. They, so he good. picked up on that on day one of Twitter. Right. He goes, oh, I get to fuck with all the people that don't have a sense of irony in the world, which is 98% of the population. Right. And uh, it really, yeah. you, uh, boy, you, you post anything political, at least when you have my political leanings. You post, you just just imply anything in a right. tweet, and boy, do you get a lot of mileage out of it. But you engage People, now. You engage on Twitter. I, I, I read your feeds sometimes. It's hilarious. Today I do. Today I did, but I, I lay off it. I used to get into it, but I've gotten into it before. But then it's it's a slippery slope, and you never. I I can't. I have too much anxiety. I never feel like I won. I feel like I'm like I hate this guy, so I, I end up. Just no, you ignoring. can't. You can't. Uh, when I first started doing it, I would like get into pissing arguments. And right, right. Then I'm like, what am I doing? Yeah. Do you understand? You don't know if it's a 12 year old kid. Well, uh, they're just trolls. That's their life is to just well, that's shit what I'm on saying. people. And you you really yeah. want to beat that, you know? But uh, like today, I get up. Sometimes I get. Somebody comes after me unprovoked. That's right. when I get pissed. And I see like an Asian chick. I go, oh, she's kind of cute. And I read what she posts. You know, it was a notification to me. Yeah, you're you're an underrated. You're definitely an underrated comedian and underrated asshole. <laughs> That's a nice thing. It is. Yes, I underrated sh- comedian sh- is a compliment. I shouldn't have told her to fuck off. <laughs> Underrated comedian's a comment. And underrated, an underrated asshole. Underrated asshole is nice because people, you should be getting more hoopla for being an asshole. You know, like. Uh, How is being an asshole nice, Joe? What are you bought into the shit? You're underrated as an asshole. She's being like a, it's like a zing. It's like a fun. All right. See, I do get hypersense. No, I, I don't see the positive there. I think. Well, you have, a, sometimes you get stuff that's compliments from fans and then you just lose it. I've noticed. I've had this. We've had this before. Compliments from fans. Well, Give people, me an example. Well, the people that love you that think they're ball busting, but Bobby will do it too. They're just like, "Fuck that fucking piece of shit." I'm like, "No, this guy loves you. He thinks he's being fun." Yeah. Well, remember you had the one, the woman that wanted to get <laughs> you to sign her leg to get it tattooed. Yes. And you wouldn't come out. Yeah. And so now she hates you. Yeah. This woman was willing to have your name tattooed on her. Yeah, but I didn't like her. <laughs> her no, she said something. The doorman came in and said she said uh, I forget why I didn't want to do it. Yeah, then she trashed me uh, for something, whatever. But uh, the Asian girl today <laughs> said, yeah, you're underrated comedian and asshole. So she canceled. To me, the asshole part cancels out the compliment at the beginning. Oh, uh, the comedian's way more important. Someone could tell me I'm well, a great comedian and then say I'm a dickless fag okay. who shits on people. I, 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 I reply back. I go, uh, excuse me, Angela. People are ta- uh, men are talking here. That's, that's my standard <laughs> whenever a chick gives me shit. Oh, uh, that's funny. Why'd she call me an asshole? Again, Toronto. She was... Canadians. Oh, jeez. Probably doesn't like me because I'm for uh, free speech. These Canadians have been all uppity since Argo came out. <laughs> Is that right? I don't know. How Oof. about him? I feel like I'm bombing. Oof. You're not on... <clears throat> Joe, this is not a... Everything's a set for Joe. He's beautiful. Yeah, that's not bad. Oh, I love him. Love him. That sounds like a hot crowd, though. Well, it's like a TV tape that show. I could never get on that show either. What are you talking about? I'm just having trouble getting on TV. That's oh, all. Kenny Rogers had a brutal line about the. Nah, forget it. Um, so I think we've covered everything. Yeah, your Indian roommate. Yeah. So, uh, Who do you have for Best Picture again? Best Picture, I got like Twelve Years a Slave. Best Actor, I like McConaughey. Yeah. Best Actress, I'm hoping for Dame you're really, Judi Dench. You're really Dench. going out on a limb with a lot of these. Well, this is who I think. I, no, it's, it's the way the critics think on the paper too. Well, come on, surprise me. Uh, no, I'm, you're I'm, right. I'm, I'm something to. Wolf of Wall Street. What did you say about that? How about I, Jonah Hill? I love it. Uh, I think that the best uh, supporting actor. Wait, now I already forget. I think it goes to Carl Malden. No, I, think, uh, I think the guy. What's the guy from? Uh, oh, oh, Jared Jared Leto was going to win for sure. They love the cross dressing lady. Of course, business. that that's why the Academy you can only take it with, for a grain of salt. You know, what I mean, with a grain of salt because they're. Uh, you know what I mean? It's all about content, what they feel is important and shit, instead of judging on what it is. I do think it's they're a getting... contests about acting and about movie making. 
I do think they're getting uh, not your personal feelings on what you think is and isn't important politically. I think they've been getting better though. Dickheads. No Country for Old Men won. They had two violent movies when back to back years that departed, and No Country for Old Men, which is used to be rare. And uh, like the English patient beating Fargo uh, was an uh, atrocity, but uh, I think they, I think they're getting better. I don't know. I just want to be in the union. I just want to be successful. Ah, uh, all right. Um, I know your Seinfeld's your favorite TV show. Well, by far, yeah. I know, which I don't get, but <laughs> I it's think a, it's amazing. It's a great show. Changed my whole life by far. Changed your life, of course. Yeah. <laughs> It's the biggest a show about of, nothing changed your life. It's the biggest life. influence of my That's, whole life. There you go. Yeah. Well, to, what changed it? Well, that fu- what are you talking about? You don't shit in girls' shoes anymore. Who told you not to do that? Costanza? <laughs> That's the biggest influence in my in my comedy. I wanted to be the the character. This guy, he's got these, he's fucking all these hot chicks. He's got fun neighbors. He never really works. He has money. He lives in New York. He's a comic. <laughs> he's doing stand up. All and right, then, I uh, hear you. No, I love the show. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying, I I, I got a few ahead of it. And their uh, sense of humor is is, is, is I, I reference that show every single day. I know you do. Yeah. And you get bumped off last comic standing. Yeah. Well, I'm making a big comeback. This is my year, everybody. <laughs> hey, let me plug my dates. Joe, can you hand me that book, that blue date book? All right. Over there. I feel like this is a trick. No, no trick. All of a sudden, the fucking couch blows up. This one? Yeah. Is that 2014? I don't know. How about me? I don't even know my dates. It's thin. Oh, this is 13. Is there another one over there? Yeah, don't worry about it. Anyways, this, uh, when is it? What's, uh, what's the date? No, not this week. Today's March 2nd. Okay, March 13th, which is a Friday night. I'm going to be at the Suffolk Theater in Riverhead, New York. And on the 14th, uh, I'm doing the, it's it's called like the uh, Worcester Comedy Festival at the Palladium in Worcester, Massachusetts. Oh, wow. With Lenny Clark and a, a, a few of the uh, Boston legends. Wow, Lenny Clark. It's in a Clark. big theater. That's amazing. So, um, so yeah, those are my, and after that, no, I don't know, side, <laughs> side splitters in Tampa. At I'm the doing end that of the with month. you. Are you coming down? Yeah, Bobby called me. I'm going to do that with you. I think we're going to go to a minor league baseball yes. game. Yes. Right? Yes. I'm gonna rent a car and make a vacation out of it. He wants, you know, he wanted me to stay. At, I like Bobby. He he owns side splits. Great guy, but I don't. I, I want to stay in a hotel. He wanted me to stay at his new house. Oh, he's okay. got this beautiful. No, I know. I don't want to see the guy booking me. He's balls <laughs> as he's getting out of the shower. Yeah, any any sharing of homes, I'm not into. Um, so yeah, he's a great guy though, and uh, that's good. You're gonna be down there with me. Yeah, I'm excited about it. We'll go to some How ball about, games. Uh, and, Tempe uh, in April. I Did think I booked. I think I, I, I could do that, but then uh, I never heard from any, 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 your agent. And then uh, I you got, have an agent now. I got an agent now. Right. It's very exciting. And I, but I booked. I'm going to be at Go Bananas that weekend recording my CD. Oh, there you go. So what when I'm in that. when I'm in Tempe? I think so. Oh, uh, April 24th to the 27th. Maybe. Anyway, so yeah. Uh, anyways, at a river. I think it's river. <laughs> I hope I'm getting the town right. Riverhead. It's down by Sag Harbor. It's the Suffolk Theater on the 13th and the 14th. I hope it's not the 14th and the 15th. Check out at nickdip.com. You can get all my dates. Yeah. Anyways, Joey, thanks for making the effort, brother. Yeah, thanks for, for we'll making have... the effort. Jesus, it sounds like I failed. What? Making the effort. What do you mean? That sounds like I stunk. Oh, my God. You're, like you're the I, most you... paranoid, insecure <laughs> fucking guy. <laughs> I'm saying you drove all the way up here from Queens. Thanks for making the effort. That's, that's worse than underrated asshole. That's brutal. Oh, my. Are you hearing this? This is why he's a comic. <laughs> They're going to be on the... my side on what this. What is your skin made of? Rice paper, you fuckhead? <laughs> Oh, my God. I'm I don't know, saying, but it's really Thanks itchy. for coming up. This is a great podcast. Yeah, well, I'm happy to come up anytime. I'd love to be up here. What are you kidding? I want to, I want to, get, my, I want to get this place it's in the... It's the 11th time I've asked him. I want to get this to, place to in the it. will. I finally got him yeah, up. Yeah, you, you asked me. You go, you want to do the podcast he, in he goes, 10 like, minutes. He goes, I can. I'm watching the sting with my girlfriend and my life partner. <laughs> I need one day's notice. I'm here, baby. I know. All right. Anyways, thanks a lot. Uh, you were terrific. Thanks. Fucking thanks. knee thanks. slap funny. Thanks, Nick. You're the best. Tuesdays with stories on iTunes. Excuse me. Excuse me. All right, kids. Uh, until next time, take care of yourselves. Wash your filthy asses. And uh, that's about it. Good day, everybody.